Hello and welcome to Loquitur Gaming. Today I'm going to be starting playing Isofarian Guard. So I had a little hiatus from the channel, um, like I said in the last video that I recorded, um, playing a little bit of Earthborn Rangers demo, uh, due to uh, mainly during tax season because I work in the tax industry. And I was right in the middle of playing Aeon Trespass Odyssey, and I want to get back to that. There's a lot of rules to that, so I'm re-going through the rule book. Um, I had this out, and I was and I painted the first couple um, of guards for this. So I thought I'd give this um, a little bit of a play while <clears throat> I'm uh, relearning the rules for Aeon Trespass Odyssey. So that aside, uh, this game is huge, um, so I don't know... <laughs> how it's going to work trying to get it all on the table. I mean, I've got books and boards and chips and cards and stuff all over the place. I think we've got most of the map on here. Uh, when the enemies come out, I might have to put them like on top of the map uh, when we get another guard out here, but we'll see how it goes. Um, there's a lot of reading for this also, so I might do a little bit of the Foreteller app, and if it's a short passage, I might just read it instead of fiddling around with the Foreteller app. Um, but in the very beginning, it's kind of long, so I'm just, I think I'm going to play the prologue part from Foreteller. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll play the for I'll play the prologue part from Foreteller. Um, it's from the perspective of Yuri. It looks like it says here. Um, and then I've done some of this setup already, but we'll go through it just to get acquainted with Grigory, who will be our character. So I don't think there's any reason to delay it. I hope this comes through okay. It might be a little soft as far as the volume, uh, but I've got it up as high as it will go. Um, so just to be forewarned, this prologue part is seven minutes long, but it sets the stage for the story. Um, so I'm going to start that now here on the Foreteller app. A cold wind bites into your face as you stare across the killing field. It makes your eyes water and then freeze, covering your eyelashes in tiny ice crystals. You close your eyes to melt the ice and so you won't have to stare at the bodies. The Falmundians lay piled up in the narrow pass where you and your fellow guards had ambushed them. A few soldiers had managed to survive the initial arrow barrage and attempted to flee, but they only provided slightly harder target practice. Even with your eyes closed, the images are etched on your eyelids. The surprise on the soldiers' faces followed quickly by fear and panic. They hadn't stood a chance. Already, the wind and snow are working to sweep the carnage under a fresh white blanket. You and a couple of the younger guards begin picking through the dead like carrion crows, searching for anything of value. You brush the snow from a fallen captain, revealing a face that is far too young. Reaching into the dead man's pockets, you are rewarded with a folded piece of parchment bearing the broken wax seal of Falmond. Inside is a hastily scribbled letter in a script you can't read, most likely marching orders for the deceased squad. It feels odd to be holding the letter that sent its bearer to his doom. If the soldiers had been able to carry out their orders, it would be you lying in the snow alongside your brothers and sisters. You suddenly feel very tired. What is it all for? The senseless fighting, the waste of life. There is no meaning in it. With a sigh, you rise from the corpse and begin making your way toward Captain Grigory with the letter. On the way, you pass Pavel and Yana, who are busy rifling through another corpse. They glance up and notice the letter, nodding in approval, before returning to their grim task. Captain Grigory is deep in conversation with Vera, Catherine, and Carson when you approach with the letter. The captain notices you and breaks away from the group. What have you found, Yuri? 
A letter on their captain, sir. Probably orders, but I can't make it out. Captain Grigory scans the letter and frowns. This is odd. It appears this group was not part of the regular army. They were a special detachment calling themselves Stone Hunters. What could their purpose have been? I have heard of these Stone Hunters, says Catherine, stepping forward. They have bought into their Mad King's delusions about the Stonebound. Stonebound? You mean the rumors of people with magic powers? Yes. These Stonebound supposedly use special stones to give them magic powers. This group of stone hunters must have been tracking some poor soul when they made the mistake of crossing into our lands. Oh, it's all nonsense. Interjects Vera. The Stonebound don't even exist. What kind of fool believes in magic and fairy tales? What do you think, Carson? Do you have any insight on the matter? Carson looks down at his boots and inhales slowly before letting it out. He seems to be weighing his thoughts. A few moments pass before he seems to reach some decision. He looks up slowly and meets the captain's eyes. It's not nonsense. I have seen a stone bound with my own eyes. Carson waits to be interrupted, but everyone is silent waiting for him to go on. This was a few months ago. I was on a galley patrolling just off the east coast near neutral waters. We had been out for about a week and we were just making one last run of the coastline before returning home when five Faldman ships came out of nowhere. They had been hiding in a cove waiting for us. Before we could react, they had lobbed a ball of burning pitch right at us. Captain, I knew in that moment I was going to die. I could only stare as that ball of fiery death got closer. It was a perfect shot. And then it was gone. I couldn't believe my eyes. We all looked around to see what had happened. Someone pointed up at the cliffs above us. There was a lone girl standing there. I didn't get a clear look at her before she... What? What did you see? Uh, well, sir, she jumped. She jumped? Yes, sir. My heart leapt into my throat. I thought she was going to die, but she didn't. She flew towards the fallen ships like a falling meteor. Halfway down, a brilliant spear appeared in her hand, and she drove it right through the deck of the lead ship. <laughs> Vera begins to laugh. It starts as a snicker and builds up to a full-on belly laugh. Oh, why have we never heard of this meteor girl of yours, Carson? <laughs> Let me guess. She destroyed all the ships, and then flew back into space, but not before stopping to give you a peck on the cheek. Enough, Vera. It, it's true. She destroyed every ship there, then disappeared. Vera doubles <laughs> over in laughter until nothing but wheezing comes out of her. <laughs> oh, Carson. Carson turns away in disgust. I know what I saw. I don't doubt your sincerity, my friend, says Captain Grigory, placing his arm around Carson's shoulders. But perhaps you were so scared in the moment that you weren't thinking straight. <sighs> Captain, uh... It's okay, Carson. We'll speak more of this later. We need to check on Pavel and Yana, then head back to Silni. Captain Grigory heads back down into the narrow pass, followed by Catherine and Vera, who is still <laughs> chuckling and wiping tears from her eyes. You put your hand on Carson's shoulder, offering silent support before following the others. When you reach them, your breath catches. There before you stands Pavel and Yana, each holding a strange stone. Stranger still, they are glowing. Carson smiles and looks at Vera. She isn't laughing anymore. All right, that's the end of the prologue. 
And there's a picture of them holding these stones. This looks like Grigory here. All right, so now there is some campaign overview and setup. Cad campaign one begins with Grigory traveling to Silni to inform the king about what has happened. It's gonna serve as a tutorial. Once it's completed, we can freely explore. We're gonna be controlling Grigory to start. <clears throat> All right, so he begins with, we've got 20 health, 3 attack, 2 defense, and 2 action points here. Um, and we've got some equipment. We've got the Captain's Blade, and it comes with the Garnet. It's going to tell us to add the Garnet later, but since I've got it out, I'm just going to show it. Captain's Blade. Comes with one chip. Is that what that means? No, the chips are on the back, right? Yeah, it's got one slot. Hmm, I don't remember what that one right there means. It didn't tell us to add another chip. He's got a guard tunic that has a slot on the back. And it can be used by anybody. That's what that means. I know that. Uh, he's got a health potion that I'm starting in the equipped item slot. So that shows that it's an item. And it can heal five. The compass on here also means that it can be used during exploration. So if it was in our satchel in this part, we could use it during exploration. But during battle, we can only use from here. And it says to put, we've got three double swords, or no, I'm sorry, three swords, two shields, and then we got the double sword from the garnet. I didn't show you the back of the garnet card. It has this double sword black chip. So that goes in the bag as well. And then we get ability cards. We've got guard. Takes one shield chip and one action point. While active, we get a bonus to our defense and we can add a green shield to the bag. And if we chain this, we'll add another one. I'll talk about chain. When we get in there, when it flips over, it's two shields, one action point. We get two defense and we get, this is a green cube, but because of the green screen for the cards, you can't tell, but you can see through it. Ooh, it's magic. And we get faint and preparation. Takes a sword and a shield chip, one action point. We add a negative one defense to the enemy. And if we chain it, we can do an attack. Then when it flips, still one of each, two action points, we add a plus one fight. Yeah, we add a plus one fight green chip to the bag. And if we chain, we get to add another one. So the chance to add two. <clears throat> and we get this advance and critical strike card. One sword, one point, add a green sword to the bag, chain, we add another one. The other side is two swords, two points. We get to do an attack at a plus two, and if we chain it, we can draw two chips from the bag. We also get cross slash, which is how we got the garnet. Attack all enemies four plus one. And then the garnet goes into the sword and that gives us the double sword chip. And it says to place Grigory's bust chip on node 28. This is node 28 right here. Proceed to page four to begin chapter one. During setup, we also had to uh, during like the regular game setup, we had to put two compasses, a one, a two, and a three skull chip, 
into the black bag that I've got off to the side there. <clears throat> there are lots of books in this game. There's indexes, there's a reference book, there's a rule book. I want to see that card thing real quick. Uh, on the front side, it's a uh, attack chip cost and modifier. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, that's how you do a basic attack. It costs one sword to use the weapon to do a basic attack. Can't believe that uh, slipped my mind. Chapter one dot one Mountain Pass Grigory. Um, I think I'll just read this one. Well, there's going to be a lot of talking. I'll do a foreteller for this one, too, because there's a, a lot of words here also. Mountain Pass. Pavel and Yana are glowing. You blink your eyes, but nothing changes. They just stand there, glowing. Stupid. The world forms in your mind. You immediately begin scrambling for other explanations. A trick of the light, a hallucination, anything to explain how two people can be standing right in front of you, glowing. Captain? Yana's quiet voice pulls you out of your thoughts. You look up to see she is staring at you. What? Your voice catches. You can't seem to remember how to speak. Captain, it's okay. Everything will be okay. She smiles and places a small stone in your hand. Time ceases to exist. You are surrounded by an immense presence that threatens to overwhelm your senses. Pieces of your life flash before your eyes. Your father teaching you how to string a bow, fishing for striped fish through a hole in the lake ice, laying in the loft as mother's stories fill your head with wonder each night. You also see darker things, stealing a chicken from Brother Fenn's yard, bloodying Carl's nose in a childhood fight, the terror of your first battle, the face of the first soldier you ever killed. Just a boy whimpering for his life as you struck again and again, trying to silence him. You look up and see a vast darkness stretching out before you. Tenors. It rolls over you like a fog, burying you in shame and regret. Suddenly, a voice calls out to you from beyond the chaos. You turn to the voice, and the darkness is shattered. You breathe in, out, and everything is okay. When you finally open your eyes, your guards are all around you. Pavel, Yana, Catherine, Yuri, Vera, Karzin. You look at each of them and see that you are all something more now. Stonebound. The word comes to you again. In the back of your mind, the voice is still there, speaking to you, guiding you. You sense that it is calling you to a valley, the Valley of Lux. Guards! Your voice is odd in your own ears. I know not what is happening, but I know that nothing will be the same again. Your words seem to break some strange spell and time resumes. I can see that you all have experienced something like what I have. While we have been fighting our petty wars, a great darkness has come upon us unseen. Your guards are silent, no doubt reliving their own experience with the enveloping shadow. But fear not, for there is a mighty presence who guides us now. At this, your fellow Stonebound look up hopefully and there are even a few smiles. We can all hear the voice calling us to the valley, and I wish to go. 
but I feel it is my duty as captain to warn the king of what is coming. You continue before there can be any objection. Carson, you are the most experienced guard here. I want you to lead everyone to the valley while I travel to Silmi. If I can make the king see the truth, we can strike a mighty blow against the shadow. Carson looks at you intently. <laughs> Captain, I will do my best, but I can't help thinking you're making a mistake by trying to convince the king. Perhaps, but I owe it to the people of Isofar to try. They must know that the Stonebound are real. When I'm done, I will meet you all in the valley. You give one last look to your guards, your fellow Stonebound, before stepping on the road to Silmi. All right. Place a narrative chip on node 32. Narrative chip, node 32, Silni, 32. <clears throat> Move Gregory's chip to node 30. Follow the instructions for the exploration phase. See page 18 in the rule book for more. What to do when you move the guards to a yellow node. If a skull chip is drawn, see pages 22 to 27 for a round of battle. Example. Once completed, move to 31. Once completed, move to 32. Then we will go to the Silni mini-map. All right, so we got a couple of exploration phases to go through. So what can I do during exploration phase? First, we got to draw a chip because we're on a yellow node. And I want to shuffle these around because I had them compass chips on top. And we draw. Oh boy. Right out the gate, huh? Triple skull. Okay, so now we need the indexes. We are on node 30. For chapter one, it's a mountain bear, a one-star mountain bear. All right. Mountain bear, mountain bear. There's our mountain bear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. Three attack, one defense, two AP, 12 health. Mountain bear. Uh, it, it was not red. So it's not an ambush. I could run, but I want to get some experience and the item. This is board one. Uh, he's going to give us four lux and a bear pelt. All right. Let's see if I can remember from the rules how to do this correctly. So we're looking at 12 health, three attack, only one defense. So it's our turn. None of our stuff has uh, any start of the round bonuses or anything, so we don't do any of that. We don't have any evasion chips or blue cubes on the guards. We only have one guard to activate. 
the bag is not empty. Draw chips one at a time, equal to our action points. We've got two, so we're gonna get to draw two chips. We don't have any negative or positive chips in here and they're all black chips, so just whatever the first two are is what we're gonna get. We got a shield and a sword. So, I've thought a little bit about this. Um, and Well, first I'm gonna do the cross slash. So we move our gem up to there. Attack all enemies for plus one. So I'm at a three plus one is four. He's got one defense, so that's three damage. So he's gonna go down to nine. Then I want to flip my guard one first, I think, so that I can um, uh, get the green cube that's on the other side, which is a chain thing. Um, and I want a cheap attack to be able to activate first to do that. So this is going to be my think. I think the like starting strategy that I'm going to use with Grigory. I put a shield on this card. So while it's active, I'm going to get an extra defense. I get to add a green shield chip to his bag because chain only works. It's not. I don't think chain triggers off of my basic attack. Uh, just I have to activate a guard ability card. Yeah. And, and I might just use this for his basic attack. Because I don't want to flip, oh, I have to use an action point, right? I don't have enough chips to do this. And I want this to stay cheap for next turn. Because if it flips over, it's two and two. And I want to be able to activate this to chain this. Uh, assuming I get the right pulls, I guess, out of the bag kind of a required component. So we'll just do the basic attack. It's at plus zero, so three minus one is two. So he goes down to seven. And that, that actually doesn't cost an AP, uh, which is cool. So I'm left with an extra AP, but that's because I only had two um, chips. And technically we should have the aggro token. And that's our turn. Enemy turn. Discard green evasion chips and blue cubes. Activate the enemy in slot one. Draw the AI card. Lowest health and aggro, so there's only one target. He's going to claw. I did not get his AP out. Two AP. Uh, what is There's a green gem in my AP container. You're not supposed to be there. All right. So, oh, he's going to draw a card. I'm going to move this so you guys can see what's happening on the board out here. Claw is going to cost an AP. It's at a plus one. So he's at four. And I'm at two. Plus one here is three. So I take one damage, I think. If attack deals damage, draw one card. It's not going to end his turn because we're drawing a card. This one is the exact same card. Uh, so we know it does that. He's at three plus one is four and I'm at three because of this. So another damage to me is 18. Uh, if it deals damage, draw a card. It does. And we need to see what this card says, even though he has no AP. Um, attack target. Um, I was supposed to refresh. Hmm. Does he still do the second part? I don't know. Maybe leave, leave a note in the comments. If he can't pay this AP, does that bottom part still happen? I'm not sure. I don't think it would. 
because he didn't get to do the embrace. So like, if you think about it thematically, it seems like he's paying two AP to embrace me, like bear hug me, and that would exhaust an AP, but he doesn't get to do that because he doesn't have the AP to do it. So I'm gonna say no. I don't know if there's anything in the rules about that. I'm not gonna spend the time to look it up now. Maybe I will afterwards. Okay, so that's his turn. Cleanup phase. Discard all chips from the enemies. No, there's no chips there. Uh, I gotta refresh his AP. Discard all chips from guard ability cards and weapons. Flip over cards that indicate they should be flipped. Okay, so this goes to discard because it's a black chip. And this one flips. And we move exhausted speaking stones to the exhausted number. We start again. <clears throat> Only one guard to activate. The bag is not empty. And we draw. Still two. Okay, we drew a sword. And we need a sh we need two shields now. Actually, oh good, we got a green. And okay, that's perfect. It's not always going to work out perfect like that, but we're lucky. So this is what I wanted to do. I want to put one here, add a green sword to the bag for an AP, and then two shields. We're not attacking this turn, um, but it's kind of building us up to the next turn. We're getting more defense though, and we have to spend an AP. While active, we get two shields, but the chain here is to gain a green uh, AP cube. So now next turn we can draw three, and we've got we've got three in the bag, which is nice. Uh, so that's us. We don't have any way to attack. Refresh that. Go to the enemy's turn. Uh, barge is an AP. Discard all shield chips from target's cards. Okay, so that's not going to flip, I guess. Oh, it's no longer active, so I don't get the bonus. That's a bummer. And another AP, so he's attacking at plus one. So he's a four and I'm only a two because that got deactivated. So I'm gonna take two damage. In turn. That was a bummer. But I'm guessing it does. it's not gonna flip either, so. That's actually kind of cool. Refresh his AP. Then we discard chips. This flips. And then this moves over to being active. Yeah, I think we're good. We start a new round. So we get to draw our entire bag because now we have three action points. The green one wouldn't have counted anyways, and they're all swords. Um, the chain on this isn't going to do anything. The chain on there is draw two chips from the bag. There are no chips in the bag. We don't have two shields. We could make two shields, but we're not... Um, I think we have enough to take him out because he's only at one defense. We have to do seven damage. This would be four. And this would be four. Okay, so we're good. So we're just gonna use our cross slash, attack all enemies for plus one. We're at a four. Uh, he's got one defense, so we do one, two, three damage. We'll use a double sword here and two action points to attack one enemy for plus two. So that makes us a five. 
minus his one is one, two, three, four damage. This green one should have gone to the supply, not the discard area. Okay, uh, end of battle. Return all chips on the enemy dashboards back to supply. Collect the rewards from the defeated enemies. Four Lux. One, two, three, four. And a bear pelt. Enemy drops. Uh, we need the bear pelt. Uh oh. There we go. We need the bear pelt. That's a one. So this is what we got. One bear pelt. Into our satchel. Uh, return all black and purple chips on both guard dashboards back to their guards bag. So black chips back to the bag. Green and red chips, green AP cubes back to the supply. We need to flip these back to primary, primary, and primary. That goes to the ready. Uh, and the black bear, or the black bear, the mountain bear is going to go back into the box. All right, so first node, first battle. We got a little bit hurt. We do have a healing potion. I'll just leave these out because we're probably going to need them quite frequently. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it for the first battle. We didn't get any money. Uh, I'd like to have some money, please, to heal. There are so many books. Some games are table hogs. This game takes up a lot of space. There's also just a lot of different stuff to look at. Uh, once completed, move the chip to node 31. I'm pretty sure that's everything. And then we got to do the exploration phase again. So we need the black bag. <clears throat> I did put the skull chip back in here, right? Yeah, the triple skull. And on node 31, we draw a compass chip. All right, we are on node 31, so I have this business card holder that has my three different uh, decks in it for the events. And node 31 is the Plains region, which is the yellow. So this is the yellow deck back here. I will, I will shuffle these when I'm going to draw from it. So for the yellow one, I'm going to put purple cube back there. And for the orange one, or red, whatever they call it, I'll put it in this tray here. And blue will go in this tray here to keep track of when we have three purple cubes on the exploration thing. And then get it out of the way, just so it's not on the table. So interestingly enough, on the exploration phase, we actually have a choice. Uh, I want to look at node 31. 31 can be a brigand archer, a timber wolf, or a mountain bear ambush. And where's the rule book? So this, I thought this was an interesting rule for the exploration phase. There's no table of contents. Page 18. Um, here it is. If a compass chip is drawn and there's less than three purple cubes, immediately place a purple cube, which we did in the business card holder. 
Then you have three options. We can choose to continue exploring without having to enter a battle event. We could choose a battle event from the enemy index for that node. Or you can choose to draw a field event card if there are three purple cubes on it. I'm going to look at the Brigand Archer. I might choose to fight him because I want stuff. I want stuff. Stuff is good. Yeah, some Lux and some money. We're going to do it. So I'm going to choose to fight an, a Brigand Archer. It's a level 1 Brigand Archer. So the reward here is 2 Lux and 3 Sill. I want me some stuff. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards to shuffle. We have our reference here, board. Uh, and it says in spot one, it doesn't really matter, three or four, because they, uh, They wouldn't have anybody protecting them in the front two spots anyways, even though I think these would typically be a ranged character, a ranged enemy. It's only seven health, one attack, and one defense, one action point. Please and thank you. Let me just have your stuff. Let's just fast forward with me not losing any health and you giving me your stuff. And it's not an ambush, so we're good. Okay, no beginning of the round abilities. I've got two AP, so I'm gonna draw two black chips from the bag. A double sword. And a sword. Um, so let's cross slash, there's no reason not to. So that's four. Minus one defense is one, two, three damage. Now I need to do four damage with what I've got here. Uh, hmm. I don't think I can do four damage. I can do two from this, and I don't have anything else to give me another attack. Unless I did this, but that would cost me both of my chips. Oh, you know what? Okay, hang on. I'm still learning the game, so I'm going to retcon something. I shouldn't just get so eager to do the cross slash. I'm going to play this as a sword, and these two sword symbols will be a shield. And it's going to cost me one AP. Oh no, I don't get to do the chain. Shoot, nope, not doing that. Hmm. I guess I could just... beef up my bag. Hmm, yeah, I guess. So I'll use these two swords. It's depend do I want swords or shields in my bag? I think I want shields more in my bag. So I'm gonna do this one first to add a green sword to the bag. It's really I really wanted to kill the archer on one, but it's not gonna happen. That costs an AP. Then I'm gonna use these two swords as a shield to have plus one defense, add a shield to the bag, plus another one from chain. Now I will cross slash uh, add a plus one is four, so still three, one, two, three. Let's get them next turn. Or her, looks like a her. I'll get them next turn. 
And that's the end of my turn. So I refresh these. Already got the aggro chip. And we draw for you. All right? Yep. Yeah. It's obviously going to be us. Flaming arrow is going to cost the AP. It's at plus two. After attack, target. Ugh. Maybe this was a bad idea. After attack, target loses three health. Okay, so. Your attack is three. My defense actually is three because of this plus one, so that doesn't do any damage. Um, but the after effect here does. One, two, three. We're already down to 13. Okay, refresh your AP. Then discard all chips, there's none there. Discard them from here. I don't think the flipping is going to matter though, uh, because this person's probably just dead. All right, so and I really don't want to draw my green chips now. I think I can take care of this. I still only got two AP. And there's a green shield. There's a black shield. And a green sword. And a black shield. We have to do four damage. Um, if I spend these two as a sword and this sword, attack one enemy for plus two. So I'm at a five. He's got one defense. So dead. All right. Shield and a sword. That would have cost both of the AP, but no reason to worry about it. Black chips, all these are black chips. Go back to the bag. The archer is gone. Was that like the worst card to get? Probably, this one would have done no damage. That one would have done no damage. Uh, that was like the one card I think that, the only one that could have hurt us. Oh wait, I gotta get my rewards. Two Lux and three Sill. So up to six Lux. And now I'm rich, I've got three money. Look out town, I'm coming shopping my three bucks all right what else can I do in the exploration phase um, inns and blacksmiths are in the town we don't have a bounty quests purchase and sell is in the town customize the guards I don't think I'm going to use my health potion just yet. Nothing to harvest. There's no side quest. That's chapter two. Caravan quest is chapter two. Yeah, so I think that's it. I think we're good. Once completed, move your chip to node 32. Place the Silney minimap on the table and place Gregory's chip on Silney. So we go on to the, the narrative event chip. And I, I think it comes off. I don't know if it matters. And we need the Silni minimap. And he's supposed to go on Seer's Gate. Just down here. And then proceed to page six and read chapter one, two. You round the final bend in the road and see the walls of Silni standing before you, cradling the city beneath the sheer face of Mount Yorl. You never cared much for the bustle of city life, preferring the company of a few good soldiers and the peace of the wilderness. Still, it's been a long day and a soft pillow beneath your head would be most welcome. But first, the king. 
Who goes there? The familiar face peering down at you from the wall is wearing a lopsided grin. You know exactly who it is, Alec. With you guarding the wall, I'm surprised Felman hasn't already taken the city. Alec gives you a hearty laugh in reply. It's good to have you back, Captain. Open the gates. There's a slight pause before the seer's gate cracks open and then swings in with a great groaning of timbers. When you stop, when you step through the gate, Alec is there to meet you. Where to, Captain? The barracks or the raven's beak? Neither, I'm afraid. I must speak to the king immediately. A smile drops from Alec's face. So you come upon trouble on your patrol then? Yes, trouble and something else. You suddenly feel self-conscious about being stonebound. You determine not to say anything until the king is notified. I see, says Alec. Keep your secrets then. Let's get you to the king. Move Gregory's chip to Castle Strig. Go to one, three. After passing through the chaotic city streets, you see Castle Strig raising above the inner walls. Alec escorts you through the inner gate before passing you off to a member of the King's Guard. Farewell, Captain. If you get the chance, stop by the barracks before you leave the city. I know the Guard would love to see you. Thank you, Alec. I'll be sure to do that when I'm done here. Make sure to keep your eyes sharp on that wall. You return Alec's salute and turn to ascend the steps to the Great Hall. Two more of the King's Guard pull open the hall doors, and you're greeted by the booming voice of King Karst. Grigory, my faithful captain, I'm glad to see you, but your early return does not bode well. Tell me, what have you encountered out on your patrol? King Karst's frankness is often jarring to outsiders, but you know that the king doesn't suffer foolish pomp or idle pleasantries. It's often best to get straight to the point. My king, we ambushed a band of Felman soldiers in the mountain passes west of here. Judging by their brazen actions and the material they carried on them, my best guess is that they were stone hunters. Ha! the king bellows. Stone hunters? King Joram has gone well and truly mad. He now sends good soldiers to their death on fool's fancy. My king, you interrupt. I know this sounds unlikely, but King Joram may not be as mad as we suspect. I have seen something that will change our understanding of the world. You pause, screwing up your courage before uttering. The stonebound are real. King Karst locks his gaze with you before a new voice breaks the silence. The stonebound do not exist. A cloaked shadow emerges from behind the throne. Ah, greetings, Temnota, you respond. I was wondering if you would be sulking back there. Skulking, not sulking, skulking. Very different. Such disrespect is unbecoming of one of your stature. I'd be more careful, especially after espousing such heresy. The truth is not heresy. Well then, show us the truth. Choose a path. We can prove to Temnota that you are stonebound. Or we could speak to King Karst privately. Hmm. I don't like the way she was talking to me. But he also seems like a friend. No, I don't like the way she was talking to me. I'm going to proceed to page 9 and do chapter 1 point or 1 4. There's the picture talking to the king and. <laughs> Temnota, not sulking, skulking. You couldn't see her back there, bro? Oh, maybe she, the, I guess the throne is tall. That's kind of weird. Let me hide behind the throne anytime someone comes in. Is this the one? 1. 1.4, yeah. <clears throat> you hold your sword, your sword? You hold your sword aloft and it emits a faint glow. It seems to gather in the shadows from the room and absorb them to, into the shadow. It seems to absorb them into the sword. As the shadows disappear, the sword grows brighter. Simple tricks for fools, sneers Temnota, but you can see that she is visibly shaken. You make a mockery of our way of life and will bring ruin on us all. Sire, you know that King Joram will bring all-out war to us if he even suspects that we have found this power. King Kar sits stunned on his throne. He stares at you as if seeing you for the first time. Who are you? he whispers. Temnota raises her voice again. Sire, we cannot afford to go to war over one delusional captain. Captain Grigory has proved his heresy by his own actions. To claim there is a power other than that given to us by Uvedet? Uvedet? Is blasphemy worthy of death? As Temnota speaks, the sunlight streaming in through the windows dims, as if a cloud has passed in front of the sun. King Karst stirs slightly, but his eyes also seem clouded over. 
he finally lifts his gaze and speaks to you. You must leave these lands. Sire, this isn't you. Temnoda has poisoned your mind. That's enough from you, Temnoda yells. Guards, do you hear? You heard the king. Captain Grigory is hereby banished from Isofar. Take him away. The king's guard steps in to escort you out of the hall. But just before you leave, King Karst seems to recover slightly. You may take any provisions you need from Fort Straws. Temnoda's eyes widen slightly before she narrows her gaze to give you a withering stare. Be safe, Captain Grigory. Place a narrative chip on Silni, Rhinox Square. Uh, Rhinox Square. Proceed to page 11, chapter 1 6. Uh, 1 6. You pass through the streets of uh, Silni in a daze. Did it say to move my chip? Yes, move the chip to the narrative event. You pass through the streets of Silni in a daze. There is no doubt that Temnoda and the Circle of Seers have been thoroughly corrupted by Tenebris. Your heart aches for King Karst, but you can only hope he can resist Temnoda. Perhaps you can rally support from the guards at Fort Straws. Maybe there are some there who would listen to their old captain, even if he did claim to be stonebound. Lost in your thoughts, you realize you've wandered into Rhinox Square, the bustling center of Silni. The crowd is thick and noisy as merchants call out to potential customers and people weave around the heavy carts, rumbling along their routes between warehouse and stall. Out of the corner of your eye, you happen to catch a glint of steel. You instinctively raise your arm to block the blade, but the attacker scores a small hit on your arm. Grigory loses a hit point. Okay, we're down to 12. Temnota certainly didn't waste any time. Battle event. Place a two-star Seer's Assassin and AI deck on the enemy dashboard in slot one of the battlefield. Begin the battle phase. And if we're defeated, uh, if, we, if we're defeated, we just do it again. Let's move that out of the way. Let's get this. Two-star Seer's Assassin. It's nice, right out the gate. But maybe, ooh, 10 Lux and 10 Sil. All right, we got you. There are no one star Seer Assassins, apparently. 15 health, three attack and two Defense, three AP, oh boy. Maybe I should have talked to the king privately. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Uh, it didn't say ambush, which is good. That three health that we lost against that stupid archer Could come back to haunt us. We do have a health potion though. Okay, we're first. And I think I unfortunately took the green stuff I added last time back out of my bag. Primary, primary, primary. That's ready. Yes, we're good. Feels like there's at least one extra thing in here. Okay, we get two chips. That's one. And that's two. And that's three. That one doesn't count, actually. It's two black chips. All right, so. Hmm. Yes, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna go here with that. We get to add a green shield. That's an AP. We're gonna use a sword off of this and a shield to go here with our other AP 
to add a minus one defense here. And because we activated this first, we get to change. We get to attack for plus zero. So we're at four. He's down to one is three damage. Okay. And then we're going to cross slash for plus one. Wait a minute. Let's attack one enemy for plus zero. I did that wrong. We're at three. Minus one is only two damage. Okay. Then we do this for four. Minus one is three more, so he's at 10. And that's all we can do. So we put that back. Uh, no green evasion chips, no blue cubes. Draw an enemy AI card. Choose a target. Poison in the bag, aggro. Attack target, dash costs two AP at plus one. Um, so he's at five, and I have two, plus one here is three, so that's two damage to me, I'm down to ten. Discard two random chips from the bag. One, two, what do I got left in here? Okay. Um, opportunistic, he's got one, so he's going to draw another card. Highest aggro, disrupting dagger. I think this is the same thing. He doesn't have any AP, so I don't think this happens. I'll look that up after. Swiftness doesn't cost anything. He gains a green. AP, and then in turn. Okay. Uh, discard all chips from enemies and return them to the supply. So this goes away. Except evasion chips. Okay, discard all chips from the guard's abilities. flip stuff that needs to flip. We move this down to here. And we go again. And we're just going to draw the whole bag because it's two black and a green. We could gain the green. Yeah, so I think we'll do this. We add a green sword to the bag, which isn't really, that's not great. Actually, I don't think I want to do that. Then I don't get the chain. I'm gonna have to pay the health to refresh my bag next turn. Then I've got two shields. To go on here, so I've got plus two defense, and because of the chain, I gain a green cube. Uh, that's both of my AP spent, one here and one here. I don't get to do that. I don't have any chips for that. Uh, just sitting here with extra defense and another action point for next turn. Okay. So not great. Refresh that. We've got the aggro chip. Enemy's turn. He's got a bunch of AP. Uh, disrupting dagger. That will happen. And there's only one sword chip. 
that actually helps a little bit because we can refresh our whole bag. Uh, attack plus one, so he's at a four. And with this, I'm at a four defense, so nothing gets through actually. So that's not too shabby, but he does gain another green uh, thing. But he ends turn, he doesn't draw another card. Okay, so that's cool. Discard that. Choose if the guard's bag is empty. It is. Oh, wait, I didn't do the cleanup phase. Cleanup phase first. There's no chips. We have to refresh that. This green goes over here. This flips. This flips. And this moves to here. All right, we're coming for you now. Yep, okay, now the bag is empty. All the black chips go back in. And <clears throat> now we have three AP. One. Two. Three. With three AP, Um, I guess it's just which way do I want to chain? With only three AP, I can only do one of these two cards and the guard card. So this would be on the guard card. This could go to the critical strike, basic attack, and we do our cross slash. All right, so we'll do this first. Uh, we don't really, no, we're not going to do this first. We don't need to draw two chips from the bag because we can't use them. We don't have any more AP. So we're going to use this two swords here, two AP. Attack one enemy for plus two. So that would be five. Minus two is three. So he's down to seven. Now we go here with this. We get to add a shield to the bag. Plus we chained it, so we add a second shield to the bag. And we use this on his basic thing here. It's three, minus two is one. We will use cross slash, makes it four, minus two is two. We did spin that. And that's all of our stuff. So we refresh that and go to the enemy's turn. Oh no. Ending blow. One, two, three AP plus four. So that's seven. We have a plus one. Seven minus three is four. We're down to six. In turn, refresh that. At least he didn't get to redraw. All right, so cleanup phase. Discard, discard, discard. None of these are green. That goes to that. Uh, we have to flip this. And we have to flip this. And then we draw. We're still at 3 AP. 1, 2, oh, that one doesn't count. Still at 1, still at 1, 2, it's the whole bag, 3. All right, we do have 3 AP. We could get another AP here. We don't have a whole lot of ways to attack, though. Uh, which is a bummer. And we don't 
have any way to make him go down in uh, defense either, and that's not ready. So we're kind of screwed. We'll start here for an AP. We add a sword to the bag. And then we will chain here to get extra defense. And uh, that costs one. We get another AP, a green one. And then we can use one of each of these to add a green plus one fight to the bag. And it's chained. So we get to add two to the bag. And that costs our other two APs. I could attack, uh, but it would only do one damage. So I think this is better. Now the question just is, do I use my health potion? I get to do the fight again if I die. It takes me back to full health. I think I'm going to risk it. I mean, if another one of these ending blows comes up, yes, it sucks. I'm just going to risk it and just see what happens. Okay, so we activate and... Oh. Acidic Blade is one action point. Add two poison. Two poison. Where's the poison? Are they green chips? Oh no, they're purple chips, aren't they? They're stupid purple chips. Right? How do you get rid of these? Well, first he's, a, he's an attack for four. We have a defense of four, so it doesn't do any damage. I didn't forget to flip that, did I? No, I don't think so. Purple poison chips. Because aren't purple chips... Black and purple chips are moved to the guard's discard areas. How do we get these out of the bag? Hmm, I'll have to look that up later, I guess. And then end turn. Um, refresh this, go to the cleanup phase. So the green stuff goes away. These go to the discard. Everything had chips on it, so everything flips. This moves to here. And I want to check what's in my bag, because I think it's... Yeah, I would be drawing both of the poisons, because that's all green stuff. So, I'm going to take a damage, put all these black ones in here. And I think that's it. I think that's it. So I need to draw now. One, two, three. All right, we win. So this is two and two AP. Attack for plus two. Uh, I'm at five. He's got two defense. That's three. We do our cross slash, and that's enough.
Okay, return all chips on enemy dashboards. We don't need this stuff out here. Sears Assassin. She tried to kill us. Uh, we get 10 lux and 10 sill. So we're at 13 sill and 16 lux. Because they said she was from the Sears circle or something. I think that's what it said. Pretty sure. Uh, collect the rewards. Return enemy and AI cards. Yes. Return all black and purple chips back to the bag. Refresh that. Primary, primary, primary. Return red and green chips. Return AP, green AP cubes. Ready slot. Yep. Yeah. I think we're good. So we go back to this. If victorious, proceed to 1 6 victory below. As the assassin slumps to the ground, a small panic erupts in the crowd around you. Before things get too out of hand, you slip into an alleyway and get lost in the many side streets of Silni. Before long, you reach the king's gate. It seems that luck is with you and the gate is still open. Word of the killing has not yet spread to the wall. You blend into the crowd and walk out of Silni, alive but shaken. Obtain the goat skull mask accessory. Accessories. Once per turn, you may mulligan one drawn chip. Okay. Move Gregory's chip to node 35. Okay, so we must be done with this. 35 is out here. Put Silni away over there. Go to page 14. One, one eight. You walk along the road to Fort Straws, pondering what your next move will be. Should you try to persuade the guard to join you? Join you for what? To march on Silni and kill Temnota? Overthrow the king? You're ashamed of the thought as it crosses your mind. The truth is you have no idea what to do next. You stop walking and close your eyes. Maybe the voice can tell you something. You take a deep breath and clear your mind, but before anything can happen, the sound of footsteps approaching from behind grabs your attention. Captain Grigory, sir, you turn to see Alec standing before you at full attention. Alec, what are you doing here? You should be guarding the wall. My shift was over, and I was in the barracks when the rumor started pouring in. Captain Grigory has been exiled. Captain Grigory has been, was seen fleeing the city. Alec stops as he notices the dirt and blood staining your clothes. Did you get in a fight? Captain, what's going on? You look Alec up and down and sigh. The rumors are true. You can see that Alec is bursting with questions, but he lets the silence stretch out. It's a long story, you finally say, turning back to the road. Alec catches up to you and matches your stride. I think I may understand more than you think. Alec carefully reaches into his belt purse and pulls out a glowing stone. Alec, are you? Stonebound, he finishes. How? When? A few weeks ago. I heard the voice and I became stonebound. I had a vision of a great valley where other stonebound were gathering, but I felt the voice telling me to wait for something, and then I saw you. Alec pauses, waiting for you to take the lead. Alec, I'm not sure what to tell you. I tried to reason with King Karst, and I only managed to get myself exiled. I'm headed to Fort Straws for supplies, but after that I don't know where I'm headed. Well, Alec replies, wherever it is, we'll go there together. Grigory heals to 20 hit points. Yes, and all negative chips in his bag are removed and placed back in a supply. Yes. So I don't have to worry about those poison chips. 
So only all negative chips. Replace Grigory's chip with the Grigory and Alec miniature on node 35. Here's our miniature. There should be some pictures of it in the thumbnail probably is what I'll do for the thumbnail. They may also use their bus chips alternatively. I might have to use their bus chips. So I'm actually going to keep it underneath them uh, because if I have to lay some enemies out, the miniature is going to be in the way. Okay, so I have to get Alec out. Um, so I'm going to throw in a cut here real quick while I get his board and stuff out and figure out how to get it up on the table. So I will be right back. Okay, so I think I've got it all out and on the board here. When we fight enemies, they're going to have to go over here, I think. <laughs> uh, if we fight four, that could be a problem, but hopefully that's not for uh, a long time. So do need to grab the other bag, actually. Okay. Alec is now part of the adventure. Follow the game setup with two guards. That's on page 17. He's going to have the following stats. 20 health, 2 attack, 1 defense, 2 action points. Uh, he's got an iron short sword here. So it has a basic attack with plus 0 and can be used by anybody in one gem slot. The guard tunic is the same as Grigory's. Health potion is the same. We get two swords and a shield from that. And we've got our potions here. So we'll start with this one on the primary side. Takes one shield chip, one action point. Add a green sword and a green shield to Alec or an ally's bag. And later on we'll get the empower ability. We could draw three chips from Alec's bag. The potion does not have to be active. There does not need to be a chip on here to use the empower ability once we get the option to use the empower ability. And uh, I think we'll just wait until we get the ability to use the other side of these to worry about what's on the other side. Because right now we can't use the other side. These don't flip like Grigory's do with just having chips on them. Uh, this is a cool one. It costs two chips and uh, one of each in an action point to gain a green cube. So we'll get another action point. And then the empower is uh, the other character gets a green cube. Then our other potion is for a sword chip and an AP. We can add a health chip to somebody's bag. We can empower it to add a health chip to both bags. Our uh, Stonebound ability card is Reinforcement. Actually gives us an attack at plus one. And also while it's active, we have an extra defense. And that comes with an Obsidian Stone, uh, which adds a purple chip that gives us both of those. We'll put that in the sword. So that purple chip and those will go in Alex's bag. Now we have to worry about who gets the aggro chip as well. We got the purple stone here. Um, I think that's it. Get the obsidian speaking stone. Proceed to page 15. Move the guards to node 40. For the exploration phase. Once completed, move the guards to node 48. Fort Straws. Okay, so we got to do an exploration phase here. <coughs> Which means we might be fighting something. 
I'm just gonna check the bag real quick because it feels light for some reason. One, two, three, and no, there's, okay. Double skull. Just make sure it goes back in the bag. Double skull on node 40 is a brigand marauder and a brigand archer. So the marauder will be in one and the archer in three. I know it's going to be just one and two. Um, but I will know that I need to take out the marauder first before I can get to the archer. It's not an, an ambush, which is good. Archer, uh, they're both one star. Archer and Marauder. So here's our Marauder. We haven't seen this one yet. 2AP. 7 health, 1 and 1. This is a game with so much shuffling that, I mean, I hate to say that they're mandatory, but the sleeves are almost mandatory. Seven health. And we've seen the archer. The archer, fortunately, only gets one AP. But he has that flaming arrow shot, or she, I guess. They have that flaming arrow shot. Yeah. Not an ambush though, not an ambush. So now who do we want to go first? Let's get this out of the way. Put our little helper somewhere. How about right there? Who do we want to go first? If we can get these, we could gain a green AP, but do we need to do that? Health isn't that important. We could add some green chips to Grigory's bag. Too bad we can't empower yet. That would be nice. Maybe we actually want to go first over here to potentially add a negative shield. Then if Alec attacks, Alec would be the aggro. It's not always the aggro person, though. Let's have Grigory go first. So potentially get a negative defense on uh, enemy. We have to attack the Marauder first. Okay, so Grigory's going. We've only got two action points. There's one, and there's two. Now I regret this decision instantly. Because I might want to do hmm. If I do that, then it is extra damage, and I only need to do seven. It's 
might not be a wise idea, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this to add a minus one defense to the Marauder. Then I will cross slash to attack all enemies for plus one. So I'm sitting at a four. Zero defense here is one, two, three, four. And one defense here is one, two, three. And that actually would have cost me one AP. Can't forget that part. So I think Grigory is done. Refresh AP. He did attack, so the aggro chip technically goes there. Oh, wait, no, we do that after all the guards have gone. Okay, we've got two guards now. Got to remember to do that uh, other guard first. Now let's go over here. Two AP means two black chips. So if we get our purple chip, that would be a bonus. That's a bonus. That doesn't count. One. Two. So we are probably going to do that for an AP. And we have, we could do that first for an AP to get a green AP. Then, so the question here is do we, if we attack for plus one, that's three. This is going to kill the Marauder. And can we kill them both? No. No, we can't. So I don't think we worry about that because this would only do one damage. Yes. Okay. okay. So we're going to do this to add a heart chip to let's add it to Grigory's bag. I think Grigory's going to be taking damage probably the most throughout the game. Then we will do this to add a sword and shield green chips also to Grigory for our last AP. Then we're going to do this, attack one enemy for plus one. So we are at three. He's got minus one defense, so one, two, three. The Marauder is toast. Okay, so I'm going to do this just to remember that the Marauder is done. <clears throat> now the round is over, so we would refresh all AP and place the aggro chip on the last person that attacked an enemy, and that is Alec. Then we go to here, right? I think so. Highest defense? Highest defense is Grigory. Grigory's at two. No, we're tied because this is one, this is plus one, it's a tie. So it goes to aggro. 
because we didn't get any bonuses over here, right? That's right. Piercing shot for the AP plus two, so it's at three. Uh, we have a defense of two only, so that's a damage. It's over slightly too far. Add two. Is that two minus one? Shield things to the bag. Then quick shot, they don't have another AP, so they're done. I'm assuming that's minus one. Uh, it does not have the minus one there, but I'm assuming that's what that is. And they go in the bag. And in their turn, Refresh their AP. Clean up face, discard enemy chips. That This guy's done anyways. Discard all chips from guard ability cards and weapons. Okay, so these two go here. This flips. This goes here. This goes here. These discard. Nothing flips though. Nothing in the positive and negative chip areas. Green and red chips are returned to the supply. Move exhausted speaking stone gems, which we did. Next round. I'm gonna start with Grigory. Hopefully we can get these red chips out. While I it's not really going to have that much of an impact, I don't think. Okay, that happens immediately. Doesn't count. One. Two. We did not get the red defense stuff out of his bag. Well, that didn't go according to plan. We only need to do four damage, right? So if one of these goes here, uh, or do I want to get green stuff into the bag? We don't really have another way to attack, though. We don't have this. This is only going to do one damage. So we need to do three damage. And I don't think it's happening. Because this is only two. Yes, unfortunately, it looks like they're going to get to go again. Because I can't put the minus one out. Hmm, that's a bummer. I needed another chip also. Because I can't get a chain thing going either. So this one's going to be wasted, or whatever. I'll just discard that one. So we'll do that. It's three minus one defense is two. Doesn't cost an AP, but this one, we can add a green sword chip to the bag. That costs an AP. That's all we can do. Wow, that's a bummer. There's only one chip in this bag. We're gonna take a health damage to put all our chips back in. Uh, let me just look in here. 
we're drawing the whole bag because there's only three black chips and one purple chip. So we draw the whole bag. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess we'll do this, that, get a green. And this. So we're gonna add a heart to, we'll put it in Alex bag because he's got a damage. And here we get a sword and a shield. Sword and a shield to, I guess, our bag. I guess, yeah. And then this will go here. Uh, it's two minus one is only one damage. We would have spent that technically. That's not ready, so we can't do that. Okay. I guess that's it. So we refresh. Aggro token stays there. There's no green evasion chips. Activate the enemy. Choose target self. Haste, gain a cube. Draw a card. Lowest defense is going to be Alec. So for one AP, you're going to attack plus one, which is two. Alec has a defense of one, so one damage. Then repeat, lose. Loose at zero cubes for each other brigand in battle. There are no other brigands. So repeat loose for zero cost, but there's no other brigands in battle. Okay, so we took a damage, basically. And then he'll refresh. And it's our, now we go to the cleanup. There's no chips to discard. All of these go here. This goes here, this goes here, and we flip. These green ones go to the supply. This goes here. Okay, so I'm going to start with Alec, and I will be drawing the whole bag. Because I just want to heal. I would do that immediately. For one, I have these two things, but we're going to attack the enemy for plus one, which is three, minus one is two, so the enemy is dead. So end of battle. <clears throat> Turn all chips on the enemy dashboards. Collect the rewards from defeated enemies. Our rewards are Two lux each and three sil each, so four more lux. So we're sitting at 20 lux. And six more sil, so we're sitting at 19 sil. 20 lux and 19 sil. Return all the enemies to where the enemies go. Brigand, Marauder, didn't get to do any Maraudering. Maraudering? It's fun when you get to make up words. That might not be made up, actually. Brigand Archer. Hmm. 
guess I should do this in order as it says. Return all black and purple chips on both guard dashboards to their bags. Black chips to the bag. Green and red chips to the supply. Green chips to the supply. AP cubes I put back already. Flip the guard ability cards back to primary. Good, good. Speaking stones are ready. Miniature ready. Once completed, move the guards to node 48 and place the Fort Straws minimap. Fort Straws. Is it on the back? There's different stuff on the back. I had not noticed that. Uh, move the guards to the north gate on the minimap. There they are. As you walk alongside the captain, you periodically glance over, trying to decipher what he's thinking. His face is an unreadable mask, but you can sense the determination emanating from him with each step. You manage to keep mostly silent, allowing the captain space for his thoughts, and then suddenly, you arrive. The high walls and towers of Fort Straws always manage to make you feel safe. Standing before them now, they seem cold and menacing. The usual hubbub surrounding the fort is gone now, replaced by icy silence. Gregory lets the silence stretch out before shouting, Open the gate! Would you have your captain stand out in the cold? After a moment, a dark figure comes to stand above the gate, leering down at you. Captain? That's an interesting thing to call yourself. I heard a little bird tell me that you're captain no longer. Akev. Then you also heard that the king is graciously allowing me to gather supplies before my exile. That's Captain Akev to you. And yes, I will allow you to gather a few supplies. After all, I still know how to follow king's orders. I'll even let you bring your little friend. As the gate cracks open, Captain Grigory speaks to you. You're sure you want to cast your lot with me? There's no going back from here. And this is from Alex's point of view. It says it uh, in the book right there. Uh, da -da -da -da. My lot is with the Stonebound, and that means you. This is bigger than even I so far now. Captain Grigory takes a look at you and nods before stepping through the gate. Move the guards to the courtyard. And then go to 1 10, or 1 semicolon 10. Not semicolon, colon, whatever. 1 10. As you pass through the gate, you're surprised to see the courtyard filled with what must be every guard at the fort. They seem to be split into two groups the larger group surrounding Captain Akev, facing down a much smaller group near the west gate, perhaps 20 guards. Akev locks eyes with you, only speaking when you are a few paces away. Grigory, it's so good to see you again. Tell me, how has my son been doing under your command? The sudden shift in tone throws you. Your thoughts flick back to Yuri, young and eager and now stonebound. Yuri is young, you reply, but he is a strong heart. With more experience, I believe he will make an excellent leader someday. I must tell you, Akev sneers, I'm glad that he won't be getting that experience from you. You see, you've always struck me as a bit dull. At this, the guards behind Akev begin to chuckle. Akev continues, I think my boy, my boy Yuri needs a stronger hand to guide him now, someone who isn't content to merely guard the borders. I so far is safe and prosperous, you reply. I do everything to ensure that it remains that way. And now this has shifted to Grigory's point of view, if you couldn't tell. <clears throat> the Falmon threat has been hanging over our heads for generations. You were never willing to do what needed done, but I will end the threat once and for all. You're speaking of war with Falmond? That is madness. Well, Grigory, the secret to being a truly great leader just so happens to be a little bit of madness. Akev smiles and turns to the guard nearest him. Throw him his supplies and send him on his way. The good captain, oops, ex-captain, is boring me. The guard lobs a small pouch, which you snatch out of the air. You turn over the pouch and a single gold coin falls into your palm. Gain one sill. So that takes us to exactly 20 sill. Thanks, you jerk face. His name is Akev Jerkface. It's his actual last name. 
For services rendered, Akev says, Goodbye, Grigory. Don't forget to bring your pet soldier with you when you leave. A shout burst forth from the small group of guards clumped near the gate. Grigory is the rightful captain! Immediately, 200 swords are drawn and leveled at the rogue group of guards. You desperately try to intervene. No, my friends, I'm your captain no longer. King Karst himself has ordered it. The best thing you can do for Isofar now is to serve honorably under Akev. Grigory, Grigory, laughs Akev. I just don't know what to do with you. Since I'm feeling generous today, I won't kill you and your little psychophants where you stand. Instead, I offer you mercy. As Akev speaks, he singles out the small group of rebel guards with a slow sweep of his sword. You will join your precious captain in his exile. You will wander as outcasts in a foreign land until you die alone and forgotten. Your children will forget your faces. Your families will live in disgrace and curse your name and your line will end. You will be erased from history. And if any of you are foolish enough to try and come back here, you and your entire family will be hauled to the nearest town square and slaughtered as a warning to those who would betray Isofar. The only thing that softens the blow is the hope that there will be no bloodshed today. Rather than risking any further discussion with Akev, you simply turn to usher Alec and the new guards out of the gate. Something is off about Akev. You take a final look at him, but the person staring back at you no longer is no longer the Akev you knew. Move the guards to node 63. Okay, so we got the mini-map out for stories, just for story time. For some narrative immersion, apparently. So 63 is right there. And we go to 1 colon 11. The mood is somber as you walk the coastal road with your fellow exiles. Gregory thought it best to get as far away from the Fort Straws as possible before stopping to come up with a more permanent plan. Now we're back to Alex's point of view. You've taken the time to get to know some of the guards better. There are a few familiar faces in the group. Baron, who helps in the smithy sometimes. Kellen, an excellent swordsman. Danielle, always ready with a clever remark, but nice enough to get away with it. Other faces are familiar, but you can't place names with them. But there, speaking with Grigory, is a face you've never seen before. A new recruit, maybe? As you approach them, the new recruit turns and greets you. Ah, welcome, Alec. It's nice to finally meet you. Um, it's nice to meet you, too? Have we met before? I mean, no, I guess you just implied we haven't. But then how do you know my name? When you get around as much as I do, you get to know a lot of things, he answers. Rather than bore you with how I know your name, I should think you'd be more interested in where we go from here. You look to Grigory. What is he talking about, Captain? Who is this? I think it best if you just show him what you showed me, Grigory says to the man. Very well, the man replies. He stoops down and plucks an ordinary stone off the ground and holds it before you. Slowly, the stone begins to change before your eyes. A faint light emanates from the center of the stone, building in intensity until you're forced to shield your eyes. There's a sudden flash of light that pierces your eyelids and then it's over. When you open your eyes, a steadily glowing speaking stone rests in the man's hands. It's a speaking stone. But how did you know it was there? It wasn't there. The stones appear when there is a need. The man pauses before continuing. You've heard the voice speaking to you from the stones, yes? Yes, you reply cautiously. No need to fear, Alec. I am an emissary of the one behind that voice. The man pauses, allowing the words to sink in. The sudden realization of the man's importance slams into you. Now that you are aware, you can sense the power flowing from him. You awkwardly stumble, simultaneously trying to bow and shake his hand. Failing both, you manage to ask, Sire, what do we call you? I am no king, merely a guide. The man raises his gaze, and you realize that everyone has stopped speaking, and all eyes are locked on the stranger. You may call me Dunamis, I think. The man begins. I've been sent to you because the need is great. There is a darkness that has long plagued the edges of this world. You have seen its effect in men like Captain Akev, but this is just the beginning. This darkness... Tenebris is no longer content to hide in the shadows. It has chosen this time to strike out at all of Telios. Its goal is to bring every man, woman, child, and beast under its sway. But you have access to a greater power. In time, you will learn to use this power to its full potential. Until that time, a place has been set aside for you to gather your strength. Follow me, and I promise that you will meet you will not meet the shadow unprepared. Place a narrative chip on node 102. 102 is the entrance to Fort Istra. Way down here. 
102. The tutorial is now complete. Begin the exploration phase. Reference page 18 of the rulebook for instructions on the exploration phase. Now that you've completed a few battles, you may have you may have enough luck essence to unlock something on one of the guard skill trees. <clears throat> so I think I need to do another draw from the bag before I can do anything else to retreat on defeat. I just want to check something because I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, what I do with the rule book. Oh, maybe it's that one right in front of my face that says rule book. Perhaps, you know, just maybe. I think the first thing I have to do is draw the chip from the bag, right? Um, exploration is the term that occurs outside of battle. You can explore Isofar, travel between nodes, customize your guards. Exploring Isofar is done by traveling along a series of nodes on the map. When moving the guards, you will either move their corresponding miniature. No, I think uh, because I'm not moving to a new node yet. During this phase, you may craft equipment, customize your guards. Travel between nodes, begin narrative events. Yeah, I don't think I need to do it. I'm not sure. Because I'm not going to be moving, so... I won't have to draw a chip. So I'm going to customize my guards, but I think I'm going to think about that in between episodes because I can look at the skill trees. It suggests getting the combine ability for 10 Lux Essence, but I've got 20, so I could get two things. So I'm gonna have to need to look at the skill trees. Upon arrival at node 102, place the Fort Easter minimap on the table. Then we would go to chapter two. So <clears throat> we will have to move down to here. We could go to Riba, go to a town, and go through Mir, down to Fort Istra. And is there any other harvesting along the way? Uh, if I go this way, I could harvest here at 86. In 98. I don't see any mines though. So that's what we'll do next time. We'll move down to Fort Istra. I will come back and let you know what type of upgrades I decided to take. And because I think we're, yeah, we're, the tutorial is now complete. So this is the tutorial. We've got a little bit of walking to do during the rest of um, chapter one here. So I think that's it. Okay, that's the start of Isofarian Guard. Going to be a little bit of a longer video, a couple of hours probably, but um, let me know in the comments down below if you saw any rules mistakes that I made. Uh, I always like to uh, know if I'm making mistakes, especially on the early videos, so that I can correct them as I'm playing moving forward. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you're playing Isofarian Guard, I hope you're enjoying the game. I hope you enjoy everything I'm going to be putting up on the channel and that I have put up on the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.